Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwig Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the Tangle UFO from CZT Jenny Lou. Now, as of today, this is like right hot off the presses. Uh, and if you want to know what those presses are, you want to make sure to uh, go to the description section in the video and uh, look at the For More Inspiration link. That is a link to Jenny's step out and samples for this it's on tanglepatterns.com and you'll want to subscribe to linda's newsletter because almost every day you get an email with a, with a new tangle sometimes it's some recap sometimes it's a what does she call it refresher um but you know there's always something so if you want to you know do a lot of tangling um you know that is um it's a it's a great resource it really is also on her on her uh, web page is a link to zentangle.com you for sure want to uh, sign up for their newsletter as well so <clears throat> and then you know while you're at it you know, you know my website's in the description too and if you feel like it <laughs> feel free to subscribe I don't send out a lot um, I what I should be doing is sending out these these daily tangles that way and maybe at some point I might um, but uh, I just have to get doing a new process. All right, without further ado, uh, enough of me yapping. This is, uh, it must be triangle season in my head because I think the last three that I've done have had triangles in them. So this one, uh, I'm going to do nine triangles. It's kind of like making a grid of triangles. And let's see, I think I'm going to start in the middle so that way at least the middle is kind of covered or kind of in the middle. <laughs> Now this one, similar to a new that we did yesterday, if you're following me, if you're following and you're watching them daily, um, and if not, never mind. <laughs> so um, we're gonna set your triangle whatever way you wanna set it, and then next to it, it's gonna be the opposite direction. So I'm gonna put the flat part up on top here, and the point down, and then on this side, same thing so we are just alternating these and then same thing for you know when the row below we're just going in the opposite directions and this one I wanted to say that you might need to, I don't think you need to be careful about I don't think you need to be careful about um, having them be exactly alike. I think that uh, we'll see when we're done. I think that the result will still be the same. Well, actually, you you will have already seen it because I will be using this in the the cover piece. So I don't know what it's going to look like yet. It's almost like time travel. <laughs> Next step is we're going to do, uh, we're going to put some seeds in. And a seed is, oh, and I will show you. Uh, I will show you and then I will point something out. I'm going to start one right here. It's a curve line going up one direction and then, you know, starting and starting and ending at this, at uh, where we started and ended here, right? Having those ends meet up, that's a better way to put it. Uh, and having the curve line going the other direction, that is what we call a seed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put these seeds on, um, like in between the flat surfaces, so on the, out, on the outside of every side of the triangle. But what we also want to make sure to do is we're going to have the seed in the parallel direction to whatever side that we're working on. So what I decided to do is... Um, I'm going to do all of the same sides and oh what the heck we'll put one down here we'll put some up here my oh let's see i think this one is just getting old okay then on the curved ones and you'll notice uh when you look at jenny's um at her step out she puts a little, like a pencil line in here, and, and I think she writes parallel uh, somewhere on that box. So it's like, so if you were to draw a line between that seed, 
it, you want this line to be parallel to this. So that's why I'm, I'm turning every time so that way I can get it pretty parallel. And these ones, I'm just putting it in the middle. So what's nice about that is <laughs> you don't have to worry about how, uh, you know, uh, how exact your grid of, of triangles are because these are just going to go right in the middle. And we are going to fill these in. I'm just going to do that at the end. Oops, so let's get one up here too. Which is nice because, you know, I'm just looking like some of my things, my little tips I didn't hit, but I can hit that when we're coloring in. And then, for instance, uh, things like this, where this one is a little bit small, I can make it a little bit bigger if I want to. The only thing you can't do is you can't make it smaller when we're using the fill in as a course corrector. That's the only thing we can do. But bigger, yep, if you need to, you know, reshape something, that you can do. All right. Oh, then the next step, let me hit that first, is we're going to draw some curved lines. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just because the step out starts this way, I'm finding it easier to start with uh, the first uh, triangle in the upper left uh, with its point up. Okay, one thing I noticed with this is that, um, and let me just do this first one. So we're going to go from the point and do a little curve line to the seed. This, then, you know, kind of going in a clockwise arrangement, like so. And then this corner going to this seed. Then, now, I don't, I don't think you have to move it, but you could if you wanted to. Top going to this one. This one is going to reach over and hit this one and here. However you end up doing it, uh, there is a reason, and we'll find that out at the end. <laughs> so you just want to make sure, and this is one of those where I just end up kind of going slow. And once you get used to it, um, you do it. So like I, ha I hesitated because I was going to go, oh, let's just put one here. No, we're going to go from this one to here. And then this one comes up to here. So yeah, if you find if you find a method that works for you, great. It it might help, and which I'm not doing, is that it might help to do this where you're kind of going in a clockwise fashion. So like if I did this here and then here and then up to here. So see how much the sense that's making? Do you see how long it took me to get to that? <laughs> to doing it. Oh my gosh. There we go. Well, hey, the, it's uh, it's not, uh, sometimes it's not how fast uh, you win the race. It's just finishing. <laughs> so, something like that. All right. Then I'm going to fill these in. And um, I'm going to fill all of, I'm going to fill everything in. But the seeds are kind of small. And I like to do that with this, uh, with the 01. Just because I don't want to mess anything up. Or make it messy. Oh, and let me point out. I, well, I kind of did. The, the This is the great place for the course corrections. I already said that. Never mind. Don't want to repeat myself. Well, I do, but I do it doesn't mean that I want to do it. I just sometimes end up doing it. But like I said, you know, taking a look and, and maybe even coming back afterwards after you've finished coloring everything or filling everything in. Uh, then you could always take a peek and say, okay, well, how does it look? Is there anything else that I need to do? And uh, and then you can do it. This has a kind of a neat organic look. And uh, looking at Ginny's samples, she has some really neat ones where she essentially put this like behind some other tangles. I think it was Toodles or something. Uh, very organic looking. This kind of lends itself to that. Oh, and let me also point out, in um, in her samples, you will also see that you're not just stuck doing this with triangles. You could do this with any other shape that you want to. And actually, you know what? When I I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pause this in a minute and finish filling this in. And when I do that, before I unpause. I'm going to take a peek because here's my suspicion. 
uh, with putting these the seeds in and and also the curve lines is that the um, that it will be consistent in putting them on every flat side and then similarly having the curve lines going in a, in a clockwise fashion from the tip of whatever uh, whatever geometric shape you want to use because I noticed I think she had some squares and maybe some hexagons or something um, but we'll we'll take a look I'm gonna flip to my one graphic one here because that's a nice pen for filling in if you don't have extra pens um, well, while it is it is nice and therapeutic to fill in with the O1, and if that's all you have, then then that's you know that's all you have. I know I I I filled in a lot with just the O1, and uh, and it's fine. But it is sometimes handy to have these thicker nibs, not only for filling in, but uh, just for um, if you want to draw just thicker lines. Period. And it's also kind of fun to mix and match, <laughs> you know, not always drawing with the same, the same thickness. I mean, um, slowly having fun with, with that concept. And instead of, um, let's say, making an aura on something and then filling it in, just drawing it right off the bat with a thicker pen. Like I said, this is a graphics graphic one. It's a little bit different. It's kind of more like a just a felt tip, where the others, um, they go from what? At least I know. I think they might even have a smaller one uh, than the 005. I think I had heard that, but uh, commonly the 005, which is thinner than this one, uh, the old one that I was using, and going all the way up to a 12. And well, see, I said I was going to pause, and I've talked all the way through it almost. Well, you know what? Let me do that anyway. And, uh, and that way I can at least answer my own question. Hold on a second. I'll pause. If you're, if you're tingling along with me, you pause too. And uh, we'll both be done at the same time. Okay, be right back. Okay. All filled in. And. To answer my own question, yes, it does look like it. So if you were doing a square, same idea, seeds on each flat side, and then, you know, the same idea with the curved lines. So take a look and, um, you know, and see. Now she also did something, and I tried it, but I really don't like how it turned out. But since there's no such thing as mistakes as entangle, I will show you, even though I don't really care for it. But I will show you uh, this aura ing that she did, and then and I'm going to save this one uh, for shading. So, and this is just ways to finish it because this is essentially, you know, this is it, and then you can play with it. Now, if if you look, you can see kind of this path and how the path kind of tucks under, and is really really neat. And um, but she also did some shading, and like I said, I was I, I did move to the 005, but I really need my my hand just wasn't cooperating and being, you know, extra steady. And this is rather small, so I can make all kinds of excuses, but it's you know it is what it is. It's okay. So, but here's what she did: um, is if you notice, and actually let me I'm just going to put a little bit of graphite on these because I want to put a little do a little bit of shading. I want to do it very lightly though and so I'm using the um, colorless colorless <laughs> I do, do that all the time the woodless graphite pencil because it seems like it's a little bit lighter um, than the, the regular little number two um, golf pencil that I like to use but you can see where I'm putting these in. And this is on all of those curves. And I'm doing it on, you know, on, well, I'll just kind of call this on the inside of the curve. Because then, and let me get a not so, not so used. Here, here, let me. Okay. Sometimes it's good to um, use the graphite that's on it already. So that way it's not so heavy. 
Oh, there. See, I just wanted it just to be a little bit, but I want. I did want to have it tucked right in to that corner or corner. It, it, I mean, it looks like a pocket almost. And so what I want to do is just accentuate that ever so slightly. It's still looking heavy. Well, let me just get that in there. Oh, I'm just going to try that. I'm just doing a little circle just in that pocket. I'm kind of going into the black a little bit. No one's, you're not going to see it there. That is helping. Yeah, and then we can play with it some more. And move you out of the way. You want you you tangle that I'm not caring for. <laughs> you know, and, and without flipping it every direction every second, I'm just going to do all of these in that are in the one direction. Then we'll turn. It's always good to point your tortillon to where um, <laughs> the line that you don't want to cross. That's how I look at it. The line I don't want to cross is where I'm putting the tip of my tortillon actually do the same thing for the uh, the pencil as well oh, and I forgot one over here but yep I had enough on <laughs> where else did I forget oh right there you were probably pointing for me thank you <laughs> oh and there's one. Oh, it's like a game <laughs> seek and find and now you can really see. It's still a little bit, well, still, it is a little bit darker than um, than I would probably want. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. When you, um, yeah, when it's, uh, oh, yeah, maybe not. When it's darker, it does add a little bit more drama to it. But you can kind of play. And sometimes, well, I don't know, the back of this one is um, taped up. Sometimes I'll use the like the end of the tortillon just because it doesn't have anything on it. Here, let me actually I'm gonna use this is a this is a stump. Let's see what it does. It's more packed paper. These are the ones that you can like sharpen. And I don't know if you can see you can kind of see. It's um it's just, like packed with this. You can see the ridges. Maybe, maybe not. If you have both, you can see. I get that question. These are just softer. They're just different. I just wanted to see if it would do something a little different. It's not really moving it. Interesting. I was hoping it would just move it a little bit, but not so far. And maybe it is. Oh, you know what? It's softening it. So that's interesting. It's just good to have extra tools. And this is how we learn. <laughs> just playing with it. Yeah, it's almost like it's not not really wiping it off, but kind of. Oops. Have you been yelling at me this whole time? Probably. Get that one right there. No. Well, there we go. <laughs> There'll be another one, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, but now, and so now you can really see, you know, the paths that this takes. And it's almost like you forget that those triangles are there. Oh, and you know, and I did not mention this one, when I first saw it, I thought, now, wait a minute, this looks a lot like To Sew by uh, CZT Thomas Padros. And it really does. It has a similar effect. Um, and even, you know, uh, he does this, this kind of uh, aura-ing as well. Um, so if you really like this, make sure you check out Thomas Pedros also. And I do have the video to sew, and I think it's T-I-S-S, like O-O-O-H or something like that. Um, really, really neat tangle as well. Um, it's a little bit on the, uh, it's a little more difficult, but... Uh, you know, but you can get it. I, the way I, I, I think the way I did it on the video, it's, uh, it, it's helpful. At least that's what everybody has told me, and I think so. Oh, look at I found another place. You all have been yelling at me. I wonder how long it's gonna take her to find it. Found it. <laughs> <laughs> if 
but um, but yeah it's just it's really really neat and so uh, take a look at the description section again uh, just so that you can see what it looks like with different shapes and the aura ink that she does it's, it's a lot lighter so it yeah I, I, I'm not uh, this is just rather messy but you get the idea we're oh and we're going in from these pockets that's what I w wanted to explain this is what she does is you go in from this pocket and then around the seed so like here and then you end it as you can see on the at the end of the seed so that way it kind of emphasizes those pockets a little bit um, or emphasizes the path a little bit and it's it, it has a neat effect um, it's just one of those where I got to work on my own uh, <laughs> my own aura ink sometimes um, having it be a little bit bigger for me would probably be helpful but um, but it's all right and I am I like showing stuff that, uh, you know, that is like, eh, well, it's okay. Because we're all human and, uh, <laughs> um, and, I, and I like to give hope. <laughs> so, uh, so in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and enjoy the tangle. If you did, I would love to have a thumbs up, um, you know, or a like. Uh, feel free to share it. And if you have not, uh, if you've not subscribed to the channel yet, I would love it if you would be a subscriber to the channel. I do a daily tangle, and then I also uh, will post replays of the, the classes or sessions that I do. And if you're interested in doing anything live, uh, we have a fun group uh, <laughs> that uh, meets pretty much weekly. It's, it's uh, We have a lot of the same people that come every week, so we've, we've kind of developed a, a little tangle family, and it's, it's really awesome. And... Uh, it, it is just fantastic. So uh, if you want to join us sometime, uh, information is on my website. Just find the link for classes or, or leave a comment or, you know, all my information is on the website. So would love to have you tangle with us. And with that, thanks so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.